Hey everybody, this is Philip, and welcome to another On the Road. Now listen, in this video, I'm not on the road. This guy sitting beside me is. This is Paul Trokel. Last night he ministered in Dickinson, Texas at our home church, Living Faith Outreach, and I wanted to grab him and just interview him about what he is doing in the great nation of Tanzania. Um, and so, first of all, just a little history. He was my youth pastor when I was a teenager. And then when Laura and I graduated Rama, we, uh, we moved to Magnolia, Arkansas, and we were the youth and children's pastors there at, at Magnolia Christian Center. And then y'all know our history. We, we took off to Texas Bible Institute for 10 years. Man, you built that church and saw a lot of growth there in Magnolia. But in 2003, uh, you and I, you know, we stepped out by faith. Uh, we started Philip Baker Ministries, but you left Magnolia, resigned the church, and took off to the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. Tanzania. Mm -hmm. What in the world have you been doing over there for all of these years? Well, the name of our ministry is Leadership Training International, and our motto is very simple. If you touch a leader, you can change a nation. And that's the premise of the whole ministry. Uh, I met through relationships, Dr. Egan Falk, who's like the Billy Graham of Tanzania. He does the big crusades, and I run the Bible college. And what we found out is you get thousands of people saved, they need disciples. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go to the places that nobody wants to go. Uh, a lot of the cities are evangelized, but the bush is not. And there's a, basically a spiritual war going on right now for East Africa. Uh, if there's not a Christian stronghold there, then another religion would take over. And so we train leaders because we found out you're not going to change anything, whether it's a family, a government, or business, a school. It doesn't matter what it is unless the leadership changes uh, and the change becomes permanent, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the essence of the ministry. What does a normal year look like for you? How well, does the year go? The year goes, uh, if you take, basically we cram one year of teaching into okay. six months. Gotcha. We have to, because uh, these people are farmers, they're, they're bush farmers, they live by agriculture, so you have to adapt the school right. to, their, to their life. So three months on this side of August, three months on the other side of August, we have an August break, and that's how the school year runs. So you're six months in Tanzania, and then you're six months ministering in the churches of America. Right. Awesome, right. awesome. So graduation is the beginning of December, correct? Yes. All right, so when these pastors, future pastors, when they launch out, they're going into the bush, they're starting churches, what are some of the challenges they face in that culture, on that terrain, in that world? Well, uh, you know, it's so, it's so different from here. First of all, what are we going to eat today? Mm -hmm. In America, you say, uh, what is there to eat? Or, you know, where do we want to go to eat? In what Af do we want to eat what today? What do we want to eat today? Yeah. In Africa, you say, what is there to eat today? So uh, just living. Just living. Surviving. Just surviving, educating their children. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, we send them... I know this is going to sound weird, but uh, to me, the church is, in America at least, it's like having 18 pastors around one bathtub, and there's one fish in, in the uh -huh. bathtub. You know, there's, there's a church on every corner. Not that if all the people went to church, would we have enough churches, but there's so, there's so much on top of each right. other, you know. Uh, we send them where nobody, where there's no church. We mm -hmm. send them where there's no work. We send them to the uh, 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 religious strongholds, and I'm not talking about a Christian religion. Uh, I know that you understand what I'm talking about. And the witchcraft is so strong in East Africa. In fact, in all the world, uh, East Africa is the biggest stronghold of witchcraft there is. Oh, wow. So we send them there. We think... You know, you, you win there, then you win big. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's, that's the hardships they face. They face just food on the table, uh, educating their children, and then the battles with uh, certain religions that are, can be extreme, and then witchcraft, 
and a lot of times politics. Wow. That's what they face. So I've heard this spoke before. I've, I've seen it in the places I've gone, but I just wanted to get your perspective. I've often heard that world missions at its very core is the training of a national to reach their nation. Yes. What? Just give me some thoughts on that. Well, uh, I, I could tell a quick story. Yeah, good. Here's the story. Uh, it's about a, a man that grew up on a farm, and he realized as a young boy how hard farm life was, so he decided he was going to get an education when he grew up, and he did. He moved to the city, he married, he had two children, then he started missing farm life. Uh -huh. So he went back to a chicken farmer, and the chicken farmer was giving them a tour, and his kids were fascinated. But while they were sitting there looking at all the hens and eggs and all that, one of the eggs began to hatch. And the little chick inside the egg was trying to peck out, but it was hard work. And the little boy reached out and was going to peel the egg away for the chick. And the farmer grabbed him and said, no, if you peel the egg away, the chick will fall over sideways because in pecking out of the shell, he develops neck muscles of his own where he can stand up and he can drink. If he can't drink, he's gonna die. Right. If he can't stand, he can't drink. Right. So we've made a mistake in years past. It's not as much anymore. Oh, let us do everything for you. You can't do it. Uh -huh. Well, that's an insult. Africans are as smart as anybody in the world. It's my discovery. Uh, to be uneducated is not to be unintelligent. Come on. So, you know, you give them an opportunity and the gospel is every man's gospel. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will, whosoever shall say to the mountain. So you can't tell an African or anybody in the world, you can't say, let us do this for you. They, they have to prove the gospel. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, knowledge of their own culture that no matter how long I live there, I won't get all the nuances mm -hmm. of their culture. Right. They know their culture. They know how to penetrate certain societies. They know how to stand. Their neck is strong. They know to how make to an stand. Impact. Right. They know how to do that. So the gospel is the secret. The gospel works anywhere in the world. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to ask you to do something hard. You've had all these students over the years go out, start churches. Give us, give us just one success story of a student who went out and just did something amazing. Well, this is a little bit difficult because uh, when you share about miracles sometimes people in America will just look at you almost like are you making this up all right but you know I, I, I want to preface this by saying uh, think about how you get saved how do you get saved you get saved by believing that someone was raised from the dead mm. okay that's how you get saved right okay so raising from the dead is part of the gospel mm -hmm. okay that's what happened we had one of our students go out a 14 year old girl had died her parents had made a covenant with a witch doctor I'm given the headlines okay and so God gave this student a word if the parents would repent in front of the village for going to the witch doctor right because what blessing they thought they were buying from the witch doctor backfired okay and the, the girl, the 14-year-old girl, died. So she's laid out in the casket. Okay. She's on the ground. All the village people are there. They're all hooping, or half the village was there, the relatives. Uh huh. They're crying and carrying on. So he tells everybody, hush, be quiet. And he gets a word from God. If the parents will come and repent, bring what they took from the witch doctor and burn it publicly, he'll pray for the, for the girl and God will raise her from the dead. Okay, here we go. Let's fix it to get real. And that's exactly what happened. They went home. They got the artifacts, the things that the witch doctor gave. They got on their knees. They burned it. They accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. He pointed to the girl and commanded her life to come back into her. She sat up, sat up, did a, you know, sit up and sat up. And when she did, everybody <laughs> went completely berserk. Sure. All the people that were there, except the girl, the parents, and Johanna, his name is Johanna, which is John, they fled for fear. Yeah. They had never seen anything like that, and probably most people would too. Right. Well, I asked him what happened. He said, well, half the village ran, and they screaming, and it, and it brought so much attention that the other half came. 
yeah. to see what was happening. I said, what did you do, Johanna? He said, well, I thought it was a good time to give an altar call. Mm. So I said, well, what happened? He said, a lot of people got saved on that day. Wow. Now, that one miracle started four churches in two years. Mm. The news of that spread in that region, it's south, south Kenya, north, north Tanzania, bush country. These are Maasai people. Uh, he raised up four pastors, and I talked to his bishop. He didn't know it, but I went across the nation uh, to verify the story, to find his bishop, uh -huh. and to ask him in front of Johanna, did this happen to to prove Johanna, make sure he wasn't uh, just telling the story? And the sure. bishop said, yeah, it happened. The girl was raised, and four churches were born from that one miracle. Yeah, that's amazing. So, that's amazing. There's no substitute. I don't know why we think we need to invent a different way. The gospel is the power of God. Right. So what I do is I teach the gospel with no excuses and no exceptions. This is how we do it. We do it the way they did it in the book of Acts. There's no plan B. Social media can help you. Uh, Brother Philip here has helped me so much this week. But there's no plan B. The gospel is the power of God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Go and expect miracles, signs, and wonders, right. and preach, and God will do the rest. Wow. And it happens. Amen. It works. Amen. You know, a long time ago, there was a book called The Challenge of Missions, and Oswald Sanders, he wrote this concerning the Great Commission. He said, he said go into all the world, and he said, if you're not going to go, send. That always stood with me, because here's the thing. There are Paul Troquels in every nation of the world. There are people from all over the world that have went all over the world, gave up their life, gave up their home, gave up their culture, gave up their home, gave everything to go to another nation to raise up nationals to reach their nation for Jesus. Okay, they went to the world to preach the gospel. And what that book is saying, what Oswald Sanders is saying is either go into all the world or send someone in your place. And so I just want to challenge everybody watching this video to either do one or the other. Either, either do what he's done and go into all the world and give your life for the gospel, or find Paul, find a Paul Trochel in Ireland, find a Paul Trochel in Brazil, find a Paul Trochel, come on, in a nation that means something to you, and send them in your place. Pray for them. Come on, encourage them. Send them packages financially support them uh just 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 help them send them and in doing so come on you're going to the world through them it's time we all get involved come on many hands make a light load it's time we all get involved hey if you want to know more about uh paul and what he's doing in tanzania he's got a, a new media page on facebook paul tropel ministries go over there like it Help him, support him, pray for him. Uh, some of the most beautiful pictures, articles, videos are there waiting on you, and you'll really enjoy it. Hey, God bless you, and we'll see you next time on On the Road. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. For more of On the Road, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search PBM Philip Baker. Make sure and hit that bell, and you'll get a notification when we release more videos. One more thing. Have you got your hands on our brand new book, The Build, Leadership Builds, God's Churches, Ministries, and Your Life? It's available now at philipbaker.org and on Amazon in a Kindle version. Hey, God bless you. See you next time.